Hi. So, quite unsuspectingly, yesterday when I made the video on old kits, well, it wasn't supposed to be on old kits alone, it was supposed to be on uh, the worthfulness of building old kits. But anyway, um, 5,000 views in one day, which is about the most views that I have ever had on a video in one day, which is very surprising for a little channel like mine. So I thought I'd do a follow up, a, a part two on the older kits, looking at maybe a little bit of a diff couple of different aspects about that. Um, now let me just start with, uh, someone made a comment about the Harvard. Um, I did a little bit of looking up on Airfix catalogs today. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm not hugely knowledgeable on Airfix history, but it looks to me like the Airfix Harvard came out in about 1966 or something. And for a long time, until this kit came out, that was, well, arguably, it, it, it wasn't really the best kit. The FX wasn't the best kit. There were there were others. Uh, there was a couple of American brands. They, they weren't great kits either, but they were possibly a little bit better than the FX. Um, there was a testers or something, or a combined testers and something. Um, but this was massively a big improvement over the airfix kit this i don't know what the date is but this um the quality of this kit and what it had compared to the airfix it's actually astounding and hella is something that i have not talked about enough and unfortunately i did pass on a lot of my hella kits um, I'm starting to regret that actually. I might even say that Heller were way ahead of their time or looking at any particular time in the 70s and into the 80s probably were making the best quality kits or at least on par with the best quality kits. Now I've got quite a few of that hard that that hard I call it Harvard. Actually, I use the wrong word. Um, someone has pointed out that I, I'm, I'm possibly referring to the specific variant being the Harvard, but I'm actually just using the generic term T6 Texans. Um, I will do more videos uh, and a build or two of this kit. I, I have them scheduled anyway. I have many of this kit. And I like it very, very much. Um, I like the Airfix kit sort of because it fits into that nostalgic spot in, in, in our build history. I'm busy on this little one at the moment. And it got me thinking about one aspect. When I'm building this, and when I look at a variety of these, so yesterday's terminology that I was using it's old kits. When I build this, I don't get the feeling that I'm building an old kit. I mean, of course, they are old kits. They, I, I assume they referred to as vintage kits by now. But this is just what was available. And for, for, for a lot of my building career, I don't think of them as old kits. I just think of them as the FX kits. So they're not, they're not, um, you know, amazing. But they're pretty good. They, they contain the essentials. Um, so that's why I probably, I was thinking another reason that I build a lot of these old kits is just because they're the kits that were always around. So this will be very nice. Um, I'll do a little bit more on that at some point. It's uh, a few slash halves haven't been glued yet, but a very nice build. Um, so The one thing that I wanted to say about Heller, and I was looking for one of my models in the display cabinet, and unfortunately, I think it's one that has uh, got lost in moves and 
possibly damage. And that was the Newport Delage. I can't remember if it's the Newport NI62 or something like that. Um, and I had a second one in a bag. Um, but I can't find it. So I'm really hoping that I've just lost it somewhere here in amongst all the things. Sort of like this, this packaging. Now this is a Moraine 230. Um, you know, much older than that boxing of, of Hella. And there was a lot of good stuff here. And at the time of choosing these Hella kits, you know, uh, the French stuff was very unknown to me. Um, compared to all of the more conventional American and British stuff. Um, and even stuff that you more commonly saw in magazines and books. These French aircraft were just completely unknown to me. So they were introducing a whole new avenue of aviation. <clears throat> and I didn't build enough of them. But I'd like to build that Newport Delage again. I will definitely build this one since I have now so few of these. Um, one quite nice one that I do have as well is this. The Potez 540. Very interesting, very unconventional. Um, so that'll be a, a very nice thing. Now, I don't know what era that is, but I'm going to guess that's 70s releases. Um, this one's box I've put somewhere. But this is a, I don't know how you pronounce that properly, a Muro. M-U-R-E-A-U-X. But there's some of the shape of it. Um, oh, sorry, I know I, I, I won't take it out right now. You can look that up. Um, and, and I think Hella actually did an amazing job of covering... A very large number of French topics. I haven't, I haven't even browsed their um, catalog, but I think if you've got old Heller stuff prior to, prior, prior to these boxings, which I think covered more conventional topics, um, that that older style, uh, hold on to them. You've you've got some good, interesting topics there. This. I grabbed out of the display case since uh, I was looking for the other model. Um, and I can't remember what scale this is. I first thought it was 172, but now I'm thinking it might be 150th. Because next to the Tiger Moth, it is quite different. But I remember this was a slightly odd scale. can't remember exactly now. This Stumper SV4, was it? And I did a... I was I was just this this was early 80s so I just had a few paints um I had enough paints now to do uh somewhat reasonable color schemes as opposed to just gloss orange and brown and then I just decided to do uh, some some weird interesting line camo on it which I still think looks quite nice So that is one of my oldest painted kits. It's got cotton rigging. Uh, that side does have a little bit of a slack in the aileron control. And that, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was a Heller. Oh, and I did a semi-German scheme on the bottom. Splinter camouflage on the bottom. I forgot about that. And this little tiger moth is also... Um, around 1966, if not slightly earlier. Um, quite amazing that that kit is then so old. Um, I can't remember if this might be the original one that I built in about 1981. Could be. So then I've got a few of these which I'll just show you. Um, old Ravel. I did not build much Ravel back in the 80s. This one, Frog, 
Um, packeted. Now, what was the date? I saw a date on one of these. I can't remember now. Um, but they they very old. They I think they sixties. I don't know how many of you have got old packeted kits, apart from the Airfix ones like this. Or was it this one that I was looking at? Um, so this is much the same as the bubble pack which I showed you the other day. Um, I've just got this packeted version which predates the bubble bubble packs. This is the Bristol Fighter. Now this would have been box box version uh, because of the way the well the fact that it's got um, instructions but it's it's just the same as that. Um, oh no, hold on. Was this in a bubble pack? The wings might be too large for the bubble pack. Now who of you can recognize this little one? You should be able to look at that bonnet. And of course the three color kit. So this is that Chev LRDG matchbox kit which also came with the um, Jeep. Which is also very old. I'm, I'm not sure what date in the 70s they made that. Um, I have this one which I did build in the 80s. Um, I know you'll know what that is. That's the 132nd Tiger Moth. I did build one and due to its size again it sadly did not make it through multiple moves. But I have one and I will build that. It'll be pretty good. Nice one to cover. I have my Stranraya that has been waiting since the 80s for attention and it's still waiting. I found the little Bren carrier. Someone was uh, talking about that. So this does look like a somewhat interesting little kit. I will give that attention. Probably also very old. That boxing is obviously a bit newer, but uh, a very, very old kit. And I found a Centurion. I, I had way more of these tanks, but I've thinned out severely. Unfortunately, that's what happens. Um, a lot of thinning out of the collection... And you later, some years back, you decide you want to build many of those. Um, but it's okay. I mean, I, I, I can't argue because I've, I've, no matter which way you look at it, I have more kits than lifespan left, like most of us, I think. Um, this was the type of kit back in the 80s, and um, I'm guessing this. My, yeah, this one might. Uh, has it got a date? It was nice when they put the dates on them. Anyway, um, this kit probably came out shortly after the tornado was created. Um, I could not afford these bigger kits, except possibly for a Christmas present. So I had very few of them. And I really like this box art, so this one is going to get done. This one is going to get done in exactly that scheme. And to me that, I mean, that is a nostalgic build, even though I haven't built it. It just rep represents that those kits that I longingly looked at, at the time and couldn't couldn't get but I did build the Phantom um, and that's one of my oldest kits that I've still got built as it as it was built at that time now oh, so I was um, I got more comments on this than I thought I was gonna get I, I honestly thought you know really I'm, I'm holding up a piece of crap here but after thinking about it for a while Despite how difficult, well, I shouldn't say difficult, it's just, it's not an aeroplane and it's not the conventional thing that we are thinking of building. But I'm going to try and finish that. I, I said yesterday I wasn't actually going to. Um, 
I'm I'm just going to try and do as, as as reasonable a job as possible. The 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 um, intricate painting of that cloak and all that is not not something that grabs me at all. Um, the base the base I can improve on. I put uh, that railway flock on at that time, but I, c I can do a much better grass now, and I can do a much better marbling of that. Um, I hope we've still got all the pieces. There's the face. This would have also just been at the time that I, for the first time, had this flesh color, which was quite a quite an interesting thing. I have I have here the slip from when I bought this. Surprisingly, um, this was being sold in a shop in 1994. I I bought three kits in 1994. I, I don't commonly keep those little slips, um, but I happen to have it for that one. So. I guess because it's almost impossible to find these and I really don't plan on building more than this one um, but some of you said that you actually had these figures so that's interesting this one I did have and built and I was very proud of and that would have been late 70s um, that wing fold was tricky and mildly annoying because you couldn't get a nice smooth wing um, I've built two of them recently and I've got a third one on the go where I'm actually trying to super detail it which is a challenge but very very nice um, nice color scheme this one I never bought never even looked at Never liked much, and now I like it. I'm going to be building this one soon. Forga Magister. Uh, very interesting. This one I had and built and loved it. And it, it was, I, 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 I remember even now how interesting it was to learn about this, um, this civilian because I didn't do a lot of civilian stuff and um, I certainly didn't see this aircraft ever so learning about this Britain Norman Islander um, was was really really nice um I, do I have one I don't have one in my collection I don't have a built one so this will be the only one that I have then and that'll that'll date back to a build that I must have done in um, if 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 not in the 70s then early 80s but this one is the surprise of all so yesterday i said i thought this was old i looked up and it's from 1958 Now it says that it's 148th scale apparently. It was quite weird when I when I looked that up because I saw this number 139th. And I thought who makes who makes a model in 139th? Now it's not exactly clear to me they they overscaled some parts to make it easier to build, although why you would do that I mean the difference between 40th and 48th. 39th and 48th is a bit beyond me, but um, this this model is then the oldest model in my collection, but probably not far off that um, Antoinette monoplane that I showed. Probably not far off, actually. I haven't checked the date on that one. And I don't, I, I don't ever plan to keep any of my kits um, boxed or pristine or anything like that. I, I can't remember when I got this, and I planned to build it, and I 
there will still build that. Very, very interesting. 1958 kit. Because look, most of my stuff would be sort of, most of these old Airfix are 60s, 70s. Found the engine from the Mustang. Remember I was mentioning that? Which I didn't put in. So that there, I've got all the parts. It's not a lot of parts left. Um, it's going to make a very nice display piece. And I'll put this next to the Typhoon's engine, the Napier Sabre. And I think that'll look very, very nice. I, I do think Airfix did a very nice job of that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit regretful about my Heller kits, but I'm glad that I have a lot of the old Airfix kits, uh, or at least the ones that I like. Um, it's not to say I like everything that was made. But this, um, that avenue of very obscure yet well-made French kits was um, quite a nice avenue, I think. Because, look, France... France's aviation was a real big deal um, early on. They were one of the biggest countries in aviation prior to World War I and during World War I and somewhat after. I'm not sure when that tapered off. Um, yeah, if you have the stuff, build them. Okay, that's it. Happy modeling. Cheers.